If you can control the 13 former Confederate states, you control 31% of the United States House of Representatives, which means you only have to pick up 20% from the other 37 states. If you control the 13 former Confederate states, you control 13 governors who control 13 boards of election who set the election rules for those states. If you control 13 former Confederate states, you control 163 electoral votes, which means you only need 99 electoral votes from the other 37 states. So the South has always been the axis upon which this country turns and transformation happens. It was the South that changed this country during Reconstruction in the mid-1800s. It was the South that changed this country during the Civil Rights Movement. That's why there are always those who want to hold back the South. But when I come to Asheville and I look out at this crowd and I've just left South Carolina and I look at that crowd and I see black and white and young and old and gay and straight coming together and Latinos and Native, I know that the South is rising again. separate us. No longer will you keep us from building fusion allies together. But not only that, Carmen, this election is not merely about personalities. It's not even about tone, really. Somebody said to me the other day, are you worried about the tone of the candidate? No, I'm worried about the trajectory of their policies. Because just because you talk nice doesn't mean you're nice. There are some people that don't talk like a Trump, but they act like a Trump, so they must be a Trump. They may not talk like it, but check the policies. Check the policies. Check the policies. This is not about personality. It's not about, it's, this is about what's on the ballot. What, what we're voting for is, this election is about whether we're going to fund or defund public education. That's what's really going on. It's about whether we're going to provide health care or whether we're going to repeal and deny health care. This election is about whether or not we're going to elect the governor and members of the legislature who get free or reduced health care but because they are elected but then they deny health care from the very people that elected them. That's what this is about. This election is about whether we're going to give tax cuts to the wealthy or living wages to the working poor. This, this election is about whether or not we're going to address police brutality and the legitimate discontent of Black Lives Matter and whether or not whether we're going to support good police or whether we're going to pit police against the people and uphold bad police. That's what this is about. This election is about whether we're going to have a Supreme Court that undermines the Constitution or upholds the Constitution. This election is about whether we're going to have environmental justice or environmental destruction. This election is about whether we're going to welcome immigrant rights or build walls. This election is about whether or not we're going to uphold love and equal rights for the LGBTQ community or whether we're going to codify hate and deny equal rights. This election is about whether we will have elected officials who lead like this. They will have an emergency session to pass a bathroom bill that's really an anti-living wage bill and an anti-discrimination anti uh, discrimin law bill that they use to cover up 
with the bathroom portion or whether we will have the kind of leadership that will not worry about people in the bathroom but will call a special session to, to help the people that are suffering from a flood down in eastern North Carolina. It's a question of leadership. This election is about whether native people will have pipelines or will they have pipelines or whether they'll be able to pray on their burial ground. Which of the two? This election is really about whether we will have one nation under God indivisible or no nation xenophobic and divided. This election will prove to America in our politics, are lives, lies, and insults more powerful than ideas and issues? And for me, as a theologically evangelical, liberal, conservative, liberationist, oriented, charismatic, biblicist Christian, for me, this election, for me, is one who follows a brown-skinned Palestinian Jew who stood up for love and justice and the poor and the least of these and was profiled by the state as a terrorist. For me, in that tradition, this election is about whether the pastoral malpractice and the borderline heresy of the so-called white evangelical conservative will consider, continue its myth mythology an attempt to limit the moral discussion in this country or whether there will be a moral revolution of values that challenges racism and poverty and militarism and hate and redeems the role of faith and many of the faithful. That's what's at stake.